In this video we're going to talk about solving quadratic inequalities and the main thing I want to emphasize in this video is simply the procedure. Um, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to pick real hard quadratic inequalities. Um, again to solve quadratic inequalities you can either, excuse me, to solve quadratic equations because that's going to tie into it, you can either factor, so, quad, so to solve quadratic equations, You can either factor them, you can use the quadratic formula if you know that, or you can do completing the square. So completing the square. Sorry for my bad handwriting here. Um, in general, factoring is easiest if you know it factors easily. If not, the quadratic formula and completing the square although there'll be slightly longer procedures um, you know sometimes that's just simply the way that you have to do it um, to get it to work out so all the quadratic inequality all that is is basically instead of a quadratic equation we have an inequality where the equal sign should be so for example x squared plus 5x plus 6 let's make it greater than zero and this inequality in the middle sign in the middle can re be replaced with a greater than or equal to a less than or a less than and equal to um, those are all considered quadratic inequalities okay so I'm just picking a greater than for no particular reason other than I've got to pick one of the four so that's the one I'll pick the first thing you do when solving quadratic inequalities is you solve the corresponding quadratic equation. Okay, so again, probably the best way to solve quadratic equations, at least this one, um, if it works out, is to factor them. So I can factor this quadratic equation as x plus 2 times x plus 3 equal to 0. And now if I solve each individual piece, set that equal to zero, again I'll get x equals negative two and x equals negative three. Okay, so far so good. Now, the people will make the mistake. Um, so again, we're trying to solve the quadratic inequality x squared plus five x greater than zero. Or equivalently, if you factor that, that's x plus 2 times x plus 3 greater than 0. And a lot of times people will try to do the same thing for an inequality that they do for an equation. They'll try to say, well, that means x plus 2 has to be greater than 0, x plus 3 has to be greater than 0. And that is absolutely not correct. So it's wrong to take each individual piece and to try to make it like a regular equation okay so do not do not do that that is not the correct way I wish it worked out somehow that easily um, we wouldn't have to do all the stuff we're about to do but unfortunately it doesn't so we'll have to do it the way we're about to do it okay we said the solutions to our, qu our equivalent qu quadratic equation were the solutions were negative 2 and negative 3 so what I do is you want to make a number line and put those numbers on your number line so negative 3 and negative 2 and what you have to do is you now have to plug negative 3 back into your inequality and again either one of these two are equivalent quadratic inequalities they're the same thing so what you have to do is you have to test you have to plug negative 3 back into your inequality and notice if you plug negative 3 into your inequality on the left side you're gonna get 0 so the question is is 0 greater than 0 and it's not so we're gonna put an open circle to denote that negative 3 does not satisfy this inequality likewise if you plug negative 2 back into your inequality it's going to give you 0 on the left side, but 0 is not greater than 0. So again, we're going to put an open circle to denote that that value does not satisfy our inequality. 
Now what you have to do is you have to take a number from each interval. So I've got an, numbers less than negative 3. I've got numbers between negative 3 and negative 2. And then I have numbers larger than negative 2. And you can pick any number that, that you want and plug it into your inequality. So maybe I'll simply use the value x equals negative 4. Maybe I'll use x equals negative 2.5. And then for my last value, I'll use x equals 0. Okay. Now again, you can plug it into either version of the inequality. You could think, okay, so is negative 4 squared plus... So this is the question. We're plugging these values back in. So is negative 4 squared plus 5 times negative 4 plus 6? You're asking yourself, is that greater than 0? If so, all of the numbers on the left side work. To me, it's actually easier to plug it into the factored form. Okay, so x squared plus 5x plus 6 are equivalent to x plus 2 times x plus 3. So again, we're testing here x equals negative 4. So I'll get negative 4 plus 2. And then I'll get negative 4 plus 3. And I'm asking myself again, is that greater than 0? Well, I don't even really bother to calculate the numerical values. I just think about signs. Negative 4 plus 2, that's going to give me a negative number. Negative 4 plus 3 is also going to give me a negative number. Well, two negatives are a positive. So yeah, that is going to give me a number greater than 0. So if I plug negative 4 into my inequality, I am going to get a number greater than 0. What that means is, if you take any number less than negative 3, that's actually going to give you a number greater than 0. So any of those values will satisfy your inequality. Let's see, if we check negative 2.5, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to plug it into the factored form. So if I plug in now this test value of negative 2.5, well, on the first part, I'll get negative 2.5 plus 2, and then I'll get negative 2.5 plus 3. And again, I'm asking myself, is that greater than 0? Well, negative 2.5 plus 2, that's a negative number. Negative 2.5 plus 3, that's a positive number. A negative times a positive is a negative, and that is not going to give me a number that's greater than 0. So that means there's no number between negative 3 and negative 2 that will satisfy my inequality. I do the last thing. Um, I take a number bigger than negative 2. Again, we said arbitrarily, let's pick 0. That'll usually make the arithmetic pretty easy. Well, to me, I would now probably just go ahead and plug that into my original. It's just as easy as putting it into the factored form. Um, so if you plug in x equals 0, Again, in my quadratic inequality, you'll get 0 squared plus 5 times 0 plus 6. And we're asking ourselves, is that greater than 0? Well, 0 squared is 0. 5 times 0 is 0. 6 is 6. And certainly 6 is greater than 0. So that means numbers greater than negative 2 also work. Okay, so it says any number smaller than negative 3 will satisfy your inequality. Anything between negative 3 and negative 2 doesn't work. And anything bigger than 0, excuse me, anything bigger than negative 2 does work. So the way we can write our solutions using interval notation, it says anything from, if you want to think about negative infinity being out here on the left, positive infinity being way out here on the right, it says anything from negative infinity to negative 3, but not including that value. That's what the open circle means, and that's what the parentheses means. It says we cannot use that value. Recall that brackets mean we can use that number. Um, and usually they'll put a u or a union. Some people will put a comma. I wouldn't think um, an algebra teacher at this point, if you're doing this stuff, would be too terribly picky. Um, and then anything from negative 2 to infinity. Um, would work. So I'm just basically describing the stuff I shaded in in interval notation. 
Okay, and that's the procedure to solve a quadratic inequality. So again, somehow, a lot of times just solving the corresponding quadratic equation can be a little tedious. Um, you know, you may have to complete the square again, you may have to do the quadratic formula, um, but the basic idea is once you have those solutions, assuming there are solutions, if not, just pick any number at random and see if it works. Um, maybe we'll even do one of these. Um, so, assuming it does have solutions, put those onto a number line, just like we did here. You have to test those values in your original inequality, see if they work, and then you have to take corresponding values um, from each interval, plug those in your inequality, and also see if they work or not. So let's do one more, just that doesn't even have solutions. Suppose, well it does have solutions, suppose we had to solve this inequality, x squared plus 4 greater than or equal to 0. Well, if you try to solve x squared plus 4 equal to 0, assuming we're only working with real numbers, you could try to solve this by moving the negative 4 over and then taking the square root of both sides and you would get positive and negative square root of negative 4, but remember you can't take square roots of negative numbers. You can use imaginary numbers, plus or minus 2i, but um, most of the time we only work with real numbers so um, I would say for right now we'll just assume that this has no solutions in real numbers well there's no solutions so I'm not gonna put any numbers on my number line but you basically again just in this case um, all you have to do is pick any number you want and plug it into your inequality and see if it gives you a true statement or not so again if we plug the number say 0 into our inequality, we'll get 0 squared plus 4, which is 4. 4 is definitely greater than or equal to 0. So that means every single number that we plug into our inequality will in fact work. So here our solution set using interval notation would be everything from negative infinity to positive infinity. So again, if you need some extra practice um, on how to solve quadratic equations and inequalities, um, or excuse me, just quadratic equations, there's a bunch more examples of factoring, um, completing the square, and using the quadratic formula on my website. Um, you can also, I'm sure, find plenty of examples on the web out there. Uh, pretty common topic. Um, but again, this is the basic procedure for solving inequalities just test the solutions to the equation and then you have to take a number from each interval so hope this makes a little sense and I hope it helps